Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to 50 Question Friday for December 10th of 2021. Sorry, I just got to clean my glasses. It's like 16 inches of snow out there today in beautiful South Dakota. I was really happy for that. It's been a while since we've seen a lot of snow. Okay, so here we go. Let me get my computer on silent so we don't hear the pop-ups here. Okay. Good morning, everybody. So, again, welcome to 50 Question Friday. And if you haven't been here before, which I'm sure most of you have, I want to check into our chat. So, if you are here live, please do jump on the chat side. We got some great people that are always here that are happy to share experiences and help clarify things and all kinds of great stuff. And then also, if you are here live, please put your questions on the questions tab so that I for sure catch them. So, hey, Kendall, Ron, Renard. Hi, guys. Julia. Uh, Kendall got the wisdom water rings Wednesday and should have the wisdom wand today. That's, that's exciting. April, hey, Albuquerque, Virginia Beach, Alberta, Canada. I know we got people here from all over the place. So thank you all for being here. Um, let's see. They seem to have updated my everything. So let me see if I can figure out how to get over between the chat and the other. All right. Hey, Samson, Mika from California, Palm Springs. <laughs> hey, Bobby from Palm Springs, Lafayette, Hawaii, Fort Collins. Hey, Matthews. Fort Collins, huh? Too cool. All right. So um, we will begin this morning as we usually begin the 50 questions Fridays by just going into the sacred space of the heart. Um, from there, we'll take some questions from the email and then we will move on. All right. So everybody going into the heart space, just close your eyes. If you wish, put your attention onto your physical heart where you find your light, your soul's fire. Imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathe in that unconditional loving supporting energy of the earth Right into the heart bringing in that light of the earth Next connecting to the light of creation Source soul creator God breathing in that light Into the heart that consciousness The I am Now, as you breathe both those in, the divine I am, the earth, you, you all come together in the heart and just expand into you and into your world. Well, all right, wonderful beings. Let's see. We will start here with our question tab or with our questions. I think we only had one question this week on email. Okay. Let's see, here's a question for 50 Questions Friday. I went to a government facility this week, quite heavy. They completely drained me. I noticed with surprise while arriving home that the original wings of talk I had on my jack on and my jacket's pocket went completely dark. It was even kind of a purple shine. It was not dark in the morning. It's the first time I used it. Wondering if it might, if this might be related to the environment where I was. Um, so usually it is the physical environment. Well, we know for sure that it's physical environment affects the patina on the tools. Um, 
you know, if you go into a place that has a high humidity, things like that, so the physical environment will affect a patina, and it can patina quite fast, especially on the tools that are electroplated. Um, but there have been quite a few people who have noted in different energetic situations where the tools, um, it's almost like they, they turn dark. And that purplish color is usually um, from heat is, is the reason that you usually get the purplish colors um, on there, especially on the plating um, and the copper. But um, yeah, so I mean, just to answer the question here um, that, that Anna had asked, it is, um, it, it has been, I have heard that story a few times of people who do go into dense energetic environments and it changes the patina on their tools. But um, I cannot say for sure. All I can say for sure is that they are pretty susceptible to environmental. Um, this is the original one. Hey, check out my wristband. This was the original one. Um, and it still is, you know, a pretty decent copper color. And I wore it, you know, as a pendant for quite some time. And course this is a newer one so it's not a huge difference in them um, but where I can s I see people that can wear the tool and they just darken fast um, with people it's usually the, um, the the immediate environment such as being on the skin uh, some people it has their their oils and such have just a different effect on on the patina of the tools um, so anyway, we'll jump into 50 questions here over on the questions tab. Uh, Melissa, hello, I was wondering if putting the new Wisdom Water water Trio rings on the main water line would clear all the water coming into a home. Yes, that is a flipping exciting thing about these new water rings. Let me grab a set that I have right here. Sorry, I'm just changing my desk around all the way here because we are setting up this space um, to do recordings and getting ready for our open house here on solstice so the new water rings the the, the water wisdom alchemist set is quite the quantum leap forward in our abilities to transform the physical structure of water instantly. It used to be that you would have to put water within a standard tensor field, any tensor field, you can put water within that field and anywhere from four to six hours, you will not only energetically restructure it like clearing the memory, um, but it is also going through and physically restructuring it, bring it back to its original crystalline structure, the hexagonal structure of water. Then when the alchemist rings came along, we were seeing that it was working anywhere from like two to four hours instead of four to six hours on the physical restructuring of water. The reason that these are doing that physical restructuring instantly, so you can put it on the water line, but here's the but. You need to have your you need to go through and put your attention onto it first. If you go through last week, um, what was that, on December 3rd, where we did our 50 questions Friday on December 3rd, we gave the attunement, um, basically just walking you through a meditation of working with this field of the wisdom water rings and working with that consciousness of Hedica, the spirit of water, the water elemental. When you bring in Hedica into this space when you get the rings you put these rings on your incoming water line or even on your shower head I've been doing it on the shower head now too where we never used to be able to do that but you put these rings over your incoming water line then you um, you know you do that short little simple process of going into the heart space and bringing in Hedica and basically these rings will help hold that attention onto the water. Hedica is there doing the work with the water. So you only have to do this once. When you place the rings, um, just go through, do that simple process of bringing in Hedica into, the, into this field. And then 
these will hold the space for that physical restructuring of water as it flows through the ring. Plus it goes back through. And especially if you have the intention, kind of like with the Wi-Fi ring that we always talked about, putting it over your faucets and have the intention that it follows that water back all the way to the holding tank and farther. These will do that as well. So it's just simply an intention when you put these on that the energetics follow all the way back to the water tank that these come from. Because most municipalities rent out space on their water towers, their water tanks for Wi-Fi. Um, so if you notice a water tower, it's covered usually 90% of the time they are covered with um, communication towers. So it's, it's a great service if you do put one of these on the water lines and ask that it goes clear back to that water tank. Um, so anyway, super, super exciting with these rings right now um, and what we're able to do with water. It's pretty flipping amazing. All right, Ethan, about the wisdom wand. I use the wisdom ring as a portal. Would the wisdom wand, this would the wisdom wand work the same way? Yes. Um, so for the wisdom rings, these two here, the two sizes, the wisdom ring does act like a portal. So I mean, in you can see it. It's like a, you know, just like the tensor field. That's the portal right there. You imagine going in there, you imagine being in that space and bringing that space out to wherever your attention is. The wisdom wand, though, this is like the epicenter of the portal. So when you're holding on to this, it's like that entire portal surrounds you. You are the portal. Flipping amazing with the wisdom wands. So, Ethan, I know you do phenomenal work with the tools, and so... I look forward to playing with the Wisdom Wand because um, it's a game changer, truly a game changer. Um, and are you going to create a Wisdom Generator? Yeah, you know, we are working on those Wisdom Generators, but mm, they're not ready yet. Um, we don't quite understand what they're doing. They There's something that we're not quite there yet on what these wisdom generators are going to be able to do. Now, this is a wisdom generator that I love, love, love this thing. It's just basically carrying the wisdom field. It's not truly a wisdom generator because the wisdom generators are doing something different. They are connecting basically all these different dimensional layers. Um, wild stuff. I cannot wait to have the wisdom generators ready. This here is just more like energetically, it's more just four wisdom rings is basically what this heavy duty bracelet is that I made um, prototype. But um, the wisdom generators, once we have these figured out, I think they're going to be pretty flipping amazing because like I say, they are, they're connecting between dimensional layers and um, and how that's working with with us we're not sure and that's only kind of like the first part of what these generators are going to be doing so they're not acting like a standard generator where they're just you know emitting out because they don't even radiate out they're they're like a telescope um, you know those stackable cups the smallest one down here inside the generator about the size of a straw and as they go up and they get bigger as they go through the dimensions. So anyway, it'll be very interesting to see what those are going to be doing. And I do look forward to having the wisdom generators ready. Uh, to make an announcement, though, we will have the um, wisdom practitioners ring out here maybe this weekend. Um, oh, coupon code. Okay. So... I did tell you guys all that we have a coupon code. For those of you who are here in person, I'm gonna put over here on chat side. Um, crud, I haven't made the coupon code yet. <laughs> so 
<clears throat> this will grant you access. Um, I just typed it in over on the chat side. But give me about a half an hour after we are done with the webinar so that I can complete that coupon code. Hey, Randy, are you on this morning? If you are, actually, if you give me just one moment, you guys, thank you very much. And then that way I can get this created as I promised. So, product we're going to apply this to is the wisdom wand because I appreciate all of you who who come here and um, join us personally it's um, you know it's great support and then to when we ever do any of the meditations like what we've you know we've done the past few times here um, it's amazing that we all um, hold that space together and some of the things that we can do so let me get this set up here for you. So that way, if any of you would like to receive that discount on the wand, it will be good for a week and it is active under that coupon code that I typed into the side. Okay. Thank you guys for your patience. All right, here we go. We're going to go back to questions again. All right. So, Anna, what's the best way to clean the tube inside the Wisdom Wand? Mine from Quantum Pendant lost all of its shine, and Wisdom Wand is starting to go dark as well since yesterday. Um, you know, the brass. The brass is a tough one, um, you know, because we shine them up before we send them and they're always nice and sparkly but the brass and it, and it and again it depends on your environment because for some of us i mean this gosh this one i've had you know for a couple of weeks i'd say and it's still nice and semi-shiny oh no this is the one i've had for a couple of weeks okay yeah you can see the difference this one is getting dark spots on it um you can simply do the the salt and vinegar dip, you know, just dip it in salt and vinegar and then rinse it really well because inside of the tube it can collect uh, moisture. So when we dry these after they go through our detergent bath and our polishing, we always dry them, let that drain out really well. Um, but as far as being able to polish these back to their original sheen, that's really a tough one. The, basically, the best you can do is to do that bath to clear some of the dark off of there um, because you can't really get in to, to polish these. When we run them through our polishers, we have these little tiny steel pins and UFO-looking things that in our tumblers, they're able to get in and polish even those hard-to-get spaces, um, but it's tough to hand polish within there. So, yep, Anna, that is the best that I could say for the quantum healers as well as the wisdom wands to polish that brass. Um, it's just that, that dip in vinegar, salt, and a good rinse. Uh, Yulia, is the wisdom ring personal? No, it is not. The wisdom ring may seem personal because it is bringing through you. And so the tools never need cleaned or cleared. Um, and they will bring through whatever it is each person is using. So uh, let's see, Yulia goes on to say, I made a mistake of letting someone try it on and I don't feel the same energy anymore. It used to make, make me feel lightheaded. I felt a different energy present profoundly around. Should I clear the ring or the energy just blended with mine over time? Um, so we, when we are, when we first get the tools and, and, you know, and you remark about that feeling of lightheadedness and, you know, just that rush and you feel the tingling in the body, you feel all the different feels that you feel with these tools. 
basically that's because there's that that difference in vibration and it's that new energy and the tools are working in your field and in your being and they are bringing you to that space or bringing that space to you so you start to shift and change so the tool itself isn't what's changed it is you that's changed um so you know that's that's the way with wearing any of these tools you know because you'll notice that like if you wear a pendant a lot and you take off the pendant for a day and then you go and put it back on you you feel that again um so so yeah it's not the tools that change well i take that back the tools are always changing because they bring through whatever it is that you need at any given moment um and that's the beautiful thing about the tools is that they are smart tools working with you working with you and um so they'll always bring through what you need so yeah just that feeling that you don't feel that it feeling like you did initially um yeah that's just just how you've changed and you've shifted into that higher space you know you've expanded shifted raised from frequency vibration raised in consciousness oh Whew. thank you for that question and that is a great question um mika do you need to add a hedica to the new water rings will it help or is it needed um and, and again my apologies if i mispronounce anybody's names here um you do not have to add a hedica to the water rings though anything that you add with these they all amplify each other so if you do add a hedica with this new set of wisdom water rings basically i feel it will it will amplify everything one because it is bringing in just another another layer of energies you know uh, another tool physical tool with its energies that it carries but also because your attention is there and your attention with Hedica. So, you know, that might really be a phenomenal way to work with these is to put a Hedica inside of here because then when you see them and you place your water on it, you have more of a, you know, your awareness is more with, with Hedica. Um, so I think that's a fantastic idea. And yeah, you never know. Our water coasters may end up getting changed here along the way. Of course, a lot of things are changing right now. With the tools, if you guys haven't noticed, there's a lot of things that are no longer on the website. We're consolidating a lot of pages. Um, and we're trying to simplify everything, everything. Uh, Diane, do you know if the new water rings clear fluoride? Well, actually, the old water rings cleared fluoride. Um, that was even back in, <clears throat> gosh, I'm trying to think of what rings it was that, because I remember Dancing with Water had spoken about that too, um, after we started making rings for them, that they were finding that. And, you know, gosh, it was about eight or nine years ago, we did, we, I took mine to a local lab, a water lab, to do a study and it was named energy labs you know to do a study on fluoride removal and of course when i took it there all the lab technicians were shaking their head and they're like what no that's not gonna work and lo and behold our test didn't work um because they were holding the space there so we actually are working at getting um some new testing done soon with a company in california that are you know to do our cell phone tab study and i want to do a study on water with the new rings and fluoride will be the one of the things that will one of the parameters will test as well as the physical restructuring of the water um because I'm pretty excited about the water rings and the potentials that these have for water. It's pretty amazing. Um, so with, uh, with the clearing of fluoride, yes, we have, what we've seen is that 
it comes through and it changes it into something more beneficial. So that's the thing too, is that there might have still been a physical structure of it at that time. Like I say, it's been years ago that we've that we've worked with the whole concept of chlorine fluoride. Um, and so our rings were not what they are today, especially there's no comparison to these particular set of rings, um, our old rings and what they do with water. Um, so it'd be interesting to see because it's still kind of my theory that it changed the energetics of the fluoride in the water, but you might have still been, still been able to pick up the physical structure. I don't know. That's just a mental thought on the whole thing, but I will be very curious to see if we can get some actual scientific data. Um, yeah. Don't really care either way because <laughs> I know what they're doing, but uh, it would be interesting to get some scientific data um, on on the whole issue of fluoride, because as we all know, fluoride can be an issue. It's not just good for teeth. Um, let's see, Denise, can I use a wisdom ring to change the energetics of the alchemist rings to wisdom water rings? If so, is there a permanent, or will I need to set intentions each time I use them? Very good question. Okay, so we've talked about using the um, the wisdom ring and changing the energetics of rings. And that appears to be a permanent change. Uh, so we talked about how the gal at American Society of Dowsers, she had the Slim Spurling ring and she had the wisdom ring. And she was able to permanently make changes in the Slim Spurling ring, one of the originals. Um, you know, cause and I mean, we see these changes in crystals. I mean, it, it's working with consciousness cause I was re thinking about that the other night about, you know, changing the energetics of tools and, you know, other people's tools even, um, you know, cause I get that question once in a while about changing tools that they get from somebody else. And yeah, it is working with the consciousness. So it's not like it's coming in and overriding things and changing frequencies and all this stuff. No, it is working with, um, you know, the conscious creation of that tool and allowing it to expand. Um, so back to the question with working with the alchemist set of rings and this ring, um, that's a good question. My, my thoughts, my thoughts and my feelings are that it will permanently create a shift in the rings that you take a, a regular set of alchemist rings let's just say these are regular alchemist rings and you bring in that wisdom ring with it you sit with it in the heart space and you ask that it shifts those into the wisdom water rings and voila because really that's Basically, what these are is they are the wisdom or they are the alchemist rings. So they are still the trio of the alchemist, the divine I am, the chalice, and the harmonizer um, right there. But then we brought in the energetics of the wisdom in with this with the intention of bringing in Hedica, the water elemental, the spirit of water. So that's all you would really need to do is to bring your wisdom ring with these and bring that through. So that'll be curious to see. Um, well, I'll have to play with that this weekend because I'm curious to see with this new wisdom practitioner's ring on how that's going to affect the two different practitioner trios that we have. Um, you know, I, I'm pretty excited about the wisdom practitioner ring. It's, um, I think there's a lot of possibilities we can do with that one too, just because it's a larger ring. Not that it's even more powerful. So yeah, Denise, I, I feel like you can make that change permanent and then you can take your wisdom ring away from there and and still have those there. Um, let's see, Mika, do the new water rings, I know I say your name, Micah, Mika, you'll have to let me know which is the proper pronunciation. I should probably look it up on Google. Do the new 
water rings have to be flat and nested inside each other or can they be nested on a pyramid and a little bit apart oh no they can totally um they can totally be brought you know their fields separate and in all actuality there is something with that whole concept of having these separate it's it's like it's I don't know, it's doing something with them. It's almost like it's amplifying things because it's almost like it creates this tension or this amplification between the rings because you know how you can take two rings, you can create that third field. So it's almost like there's a sweet spot where you can have these rings held apart. Um, and so if you set them on a pyramid where they're held sli slightly held apart, fantastic. And, you know, you can also do the whole thing with the, the Vesca Pisces or as these would be the triquatra of having the three rings together. Um, and they're still going to carry that field. Let's see. Is there going to be a coupon code for the Wisdom Practitioner rings? Um, no, I don't think there will be because we were going to because we're going to put the wisdom rings out like sooner and actually the the wisdom wand um it was actually my original intention that we weren't going to release that until after this um this webinar to give you guys all you know kind of first chance and, and have the coupon code but we did end up releasing it over the past few days so with the wisdom practitioners ring um we're 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 probably not going to do a, a coupon code with that because we're not going to do the 50 questions Friday with it. At some point in time, though, when we go through to redo videos for all of the different um, tools, we will end up doing something on, on those days that we release those videos. Um, so let's see. Um, could you make a generator with all three of the new water rings, like one smaller generator inside of another generator inside of the last generator, so they are nested within each other and therefore bring forth the wisdom energy? Um, yeah, you know, that really would be cool to make a tensor field generator in those three sizes where they all nest within each other. There is something about that whole concept. Um, you know, a lot of people are really drawn to that concept of creating generators within a generator within a generator. You know, you don't see see people making those, but um, you know, a lot of people like that concept. So, you know, that could be a possibility that we end up doing something like that, but um, that would be a task um, to say the least. So I'm not sure might put that up to our generator maker isaac he's always looking for a challenge <laughs> so i might bring that up to isaac sometime here to play with that if we if we get slow here um let's see jody what is the best tool to fight off covid and help heal people affected so with any kind of virus a virus is consciousness also viruses come in and do changes of the dna also viruses especially covid people that are in fear always seem to create the worst possible outcomes with things just fear in general um so working with any virus, it is working with it as a field of consciousness. Know that it is a conscious living being um, and that it could actually maybe be beneficial if you work with it in a certain way, like viruses. So whenever I get a cold virus, the flu virus, anything like that, I see it as working in the highest and best for me because I'm you know, not into creating anything that's not. Um, well, take that back. We all still do that no matter what. We'll be doing that until we are masters in this creation, um, creating the things that we don't want. But really, deep down, 
anything that comes into our creation and our reality is something that not only do we agree on, but we are our creators of our reality. Um, sorry, I'll get off my soapbox there. But working with the virus, going back to that. So the wisdom wand is one that um, I've been able to really do a lot of distance work with. Um, and we'll go in and we'll talk more about the wisdom wand here um, towards the, the end of end of our work uh, of our program here but yeah working with the wisdom wand is the tool that i would suggest the most um, because it does the most profound changes on all levels of consciousness and again um, viruses are consciousness so um and then to the person who receives it so i mean we had a really good friend here just a few weeks ago uh that passed and she used covid to go and so, you know, when COVID first came along, that's totally what we were seeing it as, is that, yes, there was going to be a lot of people that were going to die, but you always choose. It is your soul. Um, you know, the death doors just don't open randomly. And so some people use COVID as a way to leave. Um, so the reason that I'm even saying that is we go back to working with the wisdom wand or any of the wisdom energetics where you are bringing in more consciousness of the person. So we would basically use this to hold the space for the person and to bring in more consciousness. And when you bring in more consciousness of yours, of the divine I am, of I am that I am, you then open up many new possibilities, you know, and that's, um, yeah, that's where we're at with, with making those huge changes in, in each of our realities is, is higher potentials and possibilities. Uh, Renard, how would you use the wisdom ring or wand to call in ancestors? Um, so basically when you so let's say you are doing your the, the meditation that we did last week with these um you know you bring yourself into that zero point center space which is man i implore you guys to all go back through and check out last week's meditation again amber goes through and she time stamps everything and do that bringing everything back into center that zero point space it's huge um so when you come into that zero point space imagine doing that basically for all ancestors as well so you'd have your set of rings or your field you know and you don't have to have the set of rings you can just have the you know you just bring in that field of the wisdom wand the wisdom rings whatever or i mean sorry the yeah, the wisdom rings or the water wisdom rings any of the wisdom fields and so you just imagine bringing so you have that field that sacred space with that wisdom field you can just invite all the ancestors in as they step in everything changes for them the work that we do rewrites history because this linear time thing is it's part of you know i could say it's all an illusion it's part of everything that this linear time that we are in in this third dimensity dimensional reality matrix in this third density and dimension um so time it's not set in stone we go back and we affect everything so as we do this zero point um whole concept of bringing everything into zero point is you are bringing yourself from everywhere frontwards backwards dimensional layers everything and as you bring yourself in you are changing everything else around you. You are basically bringing all time into the zero point as well. And so we change our history. And when we work with the ancestors, that is huge as well because so much, like our physiology, we inherit from our ancestors. There's a lot we inherit from the ancestors. Um, curses programs beliefs you know and curses really aren't you know if, if you choose to hold them and if they choose to hold them so when you bring in your ancestors it is huge it, it's healing that family 
lineage. Um, so, yeah, when you are in that space, and if you do that thing that we did last week of even bringing in the Hedica or, or however, when we are in that space, just invite your ancestors in and watch it shift and change. And that clears the lineage stuff, um, which is huge. The, the lineage stuff really affects a lot of people. Um, Brenda, I can now wear my regeneration bracelet. The wisdom ring worked. Yay. So last week, Brenda had um, her regeneration heck clasp. And it got to the point to where she just couldn't wear it. It just didn't feel right. So she used the wisdom ring and changed the energetics of it. Yay, Brenda. Thank you. So yes, we can permanently change the energetics of a ring about anything. Um has consciousness to something higher um, with the wisdom fields. Uh, is the alchemist set the same as the wisdom ring? Um, no. So we, we the alchemist set is um, we have an entire line of, of alchemist rings, and they're always in. Well, they usually come individually or in sets of three. The alchemist water rings are only in this set of three, but any of the alchemist sets, you would find that the center one is the energetics of the divine I am, the middle ring is the chalice energy, and the outer one is the harmonizer ring, not to be confused with the harmony ring. The harmonizer ring and these others work together to create a field that is greater than the greater, a sum greater than the whole. And so these three together are the alchemist set so um when we have the alchemist set it's not at the current point bringing through well the wisdom energetics is seeping into the alchemist rings i should say it's not fully anchored in we may end up trying to make that happen here um, but for now the the alchemist rings are different than the wisdom ring so then we have the wisdom rings, which currently are the two sizes here, and they're that looser twist, uh, of the wisdom rings. And these are the same energetics. We just make them in two different sizes just for the sake of if people want to wear them as a bangle. Um, so, yeah, there is still that, that difference between the alchemist rings and, and the wisdom ring. Uh, let's see. And what's the difference between the quantum healing wand and the wisdom wand? Uh, so the quantum healer is um, basically, the quantum healer was holding a higher space um, than what we had seen prior to that. And it also held all of the wands. So the quantum healer does not contain the wisdom wand, but the quantum healer contains the golden fire and light wand, the brass one. It contains the dragon wand, the shaman's wand, and the fairy wand. So the quantum healer, that tiny little guy like that size, um, contained all of the wands before it. So the quantum healer, just a fantastic wand, just to hold space as you wear it. And you can also use it to run the energy of of the um of all the other three wands before that now the wisdom wand is not intended to bring in the energetics of all the other wands you can use this as a tool of your attention and intention and basically you can say okay i'm going to bring in all the energetics of all those wands and they can come in but that's that's just because those are quantum tools. You can pick up a pencil and hold a pencil and say that you're going to bring in the energetics of the dragon wand, the fairy wand, the whatever wands, and you can bring those energetics in as long as your attention is there. You can do the same with the wisdom wand. As long as you know the field of these tools, they are quantum. Once you are attuned to them, which just basically means that you know that energetic, you don't need the physical tool. You can just bring that in from the heart space and your intention. 
you can bring in those fields. But as soon as your attention, your awareness is no longer on that field, then it just dissipates. That's why the tools are fantastic because they will hold that field the whole time because they are, that's what they do. They, they're, they're space holders. They hold that field. Um, Let's see, are the new water rings also the same as the Alchemist set? Oh, yeah. So I, I think I probably answered that one in, in the last question here. So yes, these are the Alchemist set, but they are a lighter gauge. So these specific ones um, of the water wisdom rings are the Alchemist rings. Again, the Harmonizer, the Chalice, the Divine I Am. Um, but these are different than the Water Wisdom Alchemist set is different than all the other Alchemist rings. The other Alchemist rings are also a lot heavier gauge. Sinan, did you make a tensor field generator with wisdom rings? If you did, what did you feel? Uh, yes, yep, and that again is this tensor field generator here. And again, it's more like a just a set of wisdom rings is what this is, but I kind of attuned it to, to me. Um, so yeah, still working on that generator. Uh, Mika, not sure if this got answered. I had to leave the room. I was going to put the new Alchemist water set on my pyramid. Do you think it'll do anything more than just the regular Alchemist ring since it's bringing forth the wisdom energies? So. We actually, within all of the pyramids now, you will find the wisdom energetics is in all of the pyramids now, even the quantum grid points. Um, so, yeah, the if you're using the water wisdom rings, um, basically, you're not going to add any extra with, um, and if you and if you have the alchemist set on your pyramid already. The, uh, the pyramid isn't going to contain any energetics different except for working with the water. So if you use this with the pyramid, you can intend to bring the energetics of the water into the physical body. And thank you for that idea, um, Sinan, because I think that's what I'm going to do with all my pyramids is put these water wisdom rings in it. So that way it's just giving a little bit extra in the physical to those who come in there and they might have to add that to the meditations that we do with these because that is a really a powerful thing to bring in that energetics of Hedica to go through and work with the body, especially since we are mostly water. Uh, Andrea, Having the quantum healing wand in the wisdom ring, is that like having a wisdom wand? Um, no. So I'm just kind of looking at that of having the quantum healer inside of a wisdom ring, you know, like a pendant, wearing those two together. You know, there's a disconnect there that's not bringing in the same energetics as the wisdom wand is. Um, and I'm not sure what that, so yeah, I'm not seeing that it is the same energetics as, as the wisdom wand. Um, I tell you, we, we are working to, I want to create a smaller version of the wisdom wand um, for sure. Something that you can wear as a pendant. Um, could a wisdom ring be added to the alchemist pendant? Um, yes. So we, yeah. So if you have the alchemist pendant, um, you can add that wisdom ring to it. And like I say, um, like I say, JB, it might be a thing that instead of getting a wisdom ring right now that maybe you hold off on that to add to your pendant because um, we may or may not be able to go back through and shift all of the wisdom or all of the alchemist sets to hold the energetics of the wisdom. 
that's kind of what I feel might have already happened yesterday when I put my attention on with that. So I really want to sit with Brenda and and just see if that is something that we can do, which I really feel we can do is to basically move um, the wisdom rings into, or the alchemist rings into the wisdom. But let me, um, let me play with that. And if we make that happen, I will update the website, all the wisdom or all the alchemist rings to reflect that as well as we'll talk about it on the next 50 questions Friday, if we were able to make that happen. Um, so yeah, but you can, if you want, add your, add a wisdom ring to, to that alchemist pendant. I mean, it's pretty phenomenal. Um, let's see. Um, there's some confusion between the wisdom alchemist and the quantum. Can you briefly explain them? Uh, yes, the quantum healer is that tiny little, it, it it's, um, comes in copper or brass and sorry, copper or silver, and they're both wound around a brass tube, but it's about that size. It's war as a pendant. The quantum healer is one that carries the energetics of all the wands prior to it. Then when we came to the alchemist, the alchemist is simply the set of three rings that we create that are the harmonizer, the chalice, and the divine I am. Those three rings together create the alchemist set. And out of the alchemist sets, we have everything from the pendant all the way up to the practitioner size. And so we have four different sizes of the alchemist sets, which again, the alchemist set is simply these three specific rings together is the alchemist set. Now the wisdom, the wisdom energetics was what has came in most recently, um, right on October 30th. The wisdom energetics, which we had finalized, I think by November 2nd, the wisdom energetics are in these new rings here and the wisdom wand. And we also have one ring pendant. That's the wisdom pendant. Um, and so, which I have that ring right here in my pocket. So these three are the three sizes of the wisdom rings that we create. And they are all just sized differently. They're there to use separately. You don't need three rings. Um, they're just for, these are bangles basically. So whatever size wrist, and this is a pendant. So the wisdom energetics, um, the wisdom energetics is so far beyond. It is what is allowing us to basically reprogram consciousness. Well, sorry, not consciousness. It's allowing consciousness to reprogram energy, recode energy as energy comes in to manifest into the physical. Everything in the physical is consciousness, coding energy, programming energy, arranging, structuring energy. Energy structures becomes physical. It begins in consciousness. So the wisdom is allowing us to do that allowing us to change the geometries, the flows, the patternings, the codings of energy, which comes into physical creation. Um, then we have the water wisdom alchemist set. I know that is a little confusing. The water wisdom alchemist set these are different than the alchemist rings that we create because these particular three ones together are bringing in the consciousness of water. These were intended for water. That's why they were the water wisdom, but they also contain the energetics of the wisdom rings. Um, so again, I feel that we will be able to take this alchemist set, bring in that energetics of the wisdom and put that in the alchemist set. Because truly, the wisdom rings contain the alchemist set. The wisdom rings contain everything, except for the everything ring. The wisdom rings contain basically everything prior to it, all the energetics that we've created. So the wisdom rings do contain the alchemist set within them. 
growing pains, part of new things coming in, which is why we are going through the website and clearing out a lot of things as well as information to, to, to kind of update things to where we are at because um, as we bring in new energies, it permeates everything. Kind of like with the chalice ring, when we brought in the chalice ring, it affected every tool that we created. And as is the wisdom ring, being in the, in the energetics of all these tools, it's shifting and changing everything. So we are trying to lessen the confusion by the information and the products that we have. Uh, Nika, does wearing the, the bracelets on the left or right arm affect the energetics of how it interacts with us both physically and consciously? No, only if it is your intention. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that will work with meridians, um, you know, or else they have their, you know, their, their beliefs or their knowings of different meridians and different purposes and things like that for the left, right, specific spots on the body. However, um, if you are not aware of that, it doesn't matter where you put the ring. It's going to be affecting your entire being. But there's some people who, because of their belief with that, they'll like have to choose a certain finger to wear a finger ring on so that it's affecting a certain meridian. That is only because of their, you know, if it does that, it is from their attention onto that and their belief with it. Um, but truly, the rings can be anywhere. You can carry it in your pocket, your wrists, anywhere for it to affect the entire body. Now, if we are working on a localized area, you know, like your thumbs, then a lot of us would like to put a ring, find a ring the size of our thumb to put it on. Um, if you're working on your wrists or your elbow, a lot of us would like to have a ring that is near that spot because really that the most potent part of the ring is in the center. That field right within the ring is the most potent, but then it shines its light both ways in a column of light that goes out both directions with this. Um, so having the epicenter of the ring, kind of like um, the whole concept of dipping this into soapy water and you have that bubble, that sheen. If you have that sheen near the spot that you want to work on, that's the best way to use it. So that's why it's great to use the rings, you know, on the body as well. Uh, let's see. Irina, can you take the light wand from years ago? Uh -huh. Yes, the wonderful light wand. Oh my goodness, the golden fire and light wand has taken many transformations. Thank you for being here forever, too, with us. Um, and can you take that original light wand and add a wisdom ring and get close to the wisdom wand? Mm. So actually, Mirna, yes, you can because of your attention and intention. Kind of like the concept that I was talking about where you can take a pencil and you can, if you know the energetics of the wand or the energetic, well, yeah, the energetics of the wand, you can place that into any object and it will work for as long as your intention is there. So basically you pick up, you pick up your light wand and you just say, okay, you're the wisdom wand. And as long as you are holding it and you have your attention there, it will be the wisdom wand. If you set it down, somebody else picks it up, it won't be the wisdom wand. It'll just be the light wand because the light wand is what's truly anchored into that physical object. Um, I don't want to put limits on that. I feel that you can create a wisdom wand, but it takes knowing the energetics of the wisdom wand. Well, we'll have to play with that. So sorry, I can't give you a very positive, straight answer on that. Um, yeah, we have not played with these wisdom tools enough. So it very well could be that you might be able to anchor the wisdom wand into that light wand. So, Mirna, 
come along and ask, ask that question again here in a week or two and we'll see um, what we found out. Uh, Ethan, I work with the Wisdom Ring and the Everything Ring together and I notice that they keep their own energy. They do not mix, which is good in my opinion. That is good. Um, yeah, because I feel that if the Wisdom Energetics came into that Everything Ring, it would just smooth it all out. It would shift the ring. So that's good to know that those two enter so that it's good to know that the everything ring isn't being affected by that wisdom ring. So thank you for sharing that, Ethan. Um, let's see. Could you expand on what we would use the wisdom wand versus the quantum healing wand? Um, so the quantum healer is um, the quantum healer wand, the little tiny wand, is one that you would use to do anything that the prior wands did, such as the golden fire and light wand, which you use to anchor columns of light. There's also a meditation with that one, several meditations actually with the golden fire and light wand um, of clearing timelines and realities for a person. So you can do a lot of the soul level stuff, including golden soul to soul with another person, offering that, that energetic wand to them for their timeline realities to be cleared, um, things like that. So there's a lot that you can do with the golden fire and light wand that you access the energies through that quantum healer. Those energies are anchored into the quantum healer. So the quantum healer is connected to all of those energies as well as the dragon wand. So the quantum healer, you can actually go through and create that field to work with the dragons. Um, you can connect with that wand to work with the fae, the fairy kingdoms, the fairy realms, the fae. Um, you can use that quantum healer to connect with and work with the shaman's wand. Um, so each of those wands in their own right are powerful, wonderful tools, and they all, they all have their own um, uses and personalities, basically. So if you go through each of those wands, you know, you can basically do what any of those do with that quantum healer, the little quantum healer. Now, the Wisdom Wand is a step beyond all of that. The Wisdom Wand is one that you are affecting through consciousness. You start here in consciousness, the field of consciousness. Let's say, you use the example um, that we were showing in the very beginning is the morphogenic field of a plant. A morphogenic field is basically this field of consciousness of a specific plant, let's say rice. So you have this field of consciousness that is rice. It will then come in and it will pattern energy. Everything is energy. Everything that we perceive is energy. Consciousness repattern patterns energy to create the physical plant of rice. So with this energy of the wisdom this wisdom field, consciousness can then, so let's say you take your rice and you have this wisdom ring with it, this field of the wisdom energetics. This physical asp this physical plant of the rice can connect to its consciousness and allow the repatterning to come into the physical so then the rice is able to then pull nutrients from the ground that were not there before. It is allowing the repatterning of this physical creation, this physical reality, through repatterning energy that begins in the field of consciousness. Holy smokes. That's huge. So that is what the energetics of the wisdom is. It's, 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 it's a graduation. It is stepping beyond muddling around in third density reality. Um, let's see. A careful guess as to when a smaller wisdom wand might be ready. No, Tommy, I have no clue. Check out this thing, though. <laughs> this was a prototype I had to make because I had the tube and the vision, so I had to make a scepter, the wisdom scepter. But it's not, yeah. 
Yeah, I'd stay with the wisdom wand. I'm not going to make any of the wisdom scepters. It was for fun. As far as making the small wisdom wand, um, it's still a thought. It hasn't, we haven't um, played with it yet. Um, so I'm really not sure, you know, when that one's going to become prototype and if that one will get released even. Um, still like the idea of creating, well, so there's a new pendant going to be coming in and I don't know what that is. And that could be what the, the wisdom wand is or the wisdom wand pendant. I don't know. I really don't know, but all I know is that there's a new a new pendant that needs to come in, um, and I'm hoping soon. Will you ever make your ring smaller for smaller wrists? So I know the um, this particular smaller ring, the three inch wisdom ring. Um, it's it's one that I doubt if we're going to make these smaller for smaller wrists. The bangles are kind of a tough one too because there's so many sizes out there of wrists. Um, you know, I I would like to think that sometime in the future we'll make Heka clasps out of the wisdom. It's just hard to say because I don't know where we're going with these energetics and. And we're still kind of working our way through this moment to moment on what the tools are and are going to be because we don't ever want to, um, you know, get so caught up in our new, our new stuff, our newness that we don't leave things that everybody in the world can grab onto because we are making tools for us and for the expansion of consciousness, yes. But we also want to create tools that are available to everybody. Um, it's my vision that we create basically a single ring that's like a ladder in that energetically a person will vibe with it no matter where they are at on the spectrum of consciousness, the ladder of consciousness. Um, because I want people to step onto this lower rung, people that are like, yay, beer, football, and boxing, or whatever, you know, or cage fighting. And I want people with that consciousness to be able to step onto this ladder rung and take them right to here. Um, you know, I don't want to make, keep making tools that are in all the rungs of the ladder. I want it to be one that takes you everywhere. You know, uh, for an example, in the tools is like the 144 megahertz, 177 megahertz, things like that. The, the older style tensor fields that were nothing more than a tensor field. There was no consciousness, true, really higher consciousness that were connected to those fields. Um, you know, and some people really still resonate with those. And... And, but yet we don't even make those tools anymore. You know, we, the basically, you know, and I hate to say lower or higher on the rung, um, you know, of, of the steps. Actually, I'm just going to stop right there. Um, but the point is, is that I don't know where we are going out with the tools. So I'm being a little cautious yet on making a whole bunch of wisdom tools because we don't know where it's going. Um, so anyway, Anika, I have a silver Heka clasp. I've rarely taken it off since I got it many months ago, and I usually can't wear anything for a long time. Are the energetics of the silver and the chalice changing and raising vibration as we change? Yes. So when you are wearing, um, you know, especially the chalice and beyond, um, and even the golden fire to some extent, um, these are growing with us. So wherever we step in on this ladder of consciousness, especially the chalice and beyond are allowing us to keep going up the ladder. They're not just a certain window um, of frequencies that you step in, you go up to here, you hit the ceiling, then you have to step around and get a new tool and work in these fields 
um, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to take out those ceilings of, of the tools so that when you step in, as you raise in consciousness, frequency, and vibration, that the tool is always there in support of whatever level of consciousness, frequency, and vibration that you're on. Um, that is my intention in the creation of all the tools right now. So that's fantastic that you're able to wear that silver heck of clasp constantly. My daughter does too. Um, she hasn't taken hers off in months. Um, Samson, curious, I gave a wisdom ring to a dear friend of mine and she went to Sedona with the wisdom ring as a bangle. I noticed the ring is attuned to her energy. Do the tools transform as we are in different spaces and places? Well, again, that wisdom, that wisdom ring has such a large, it, it's infinite. The wisdom ring is infinite possibilities because it connects to the wisdom of the soul, which is infinite potentials and possibilities. So the wisdom field is infinite potentials and possibilities. Truly, truly. So the wisdom rings, yes, there's no ceiling on the wisdom ring. There might still be a ceiling on the regeneration and some of the other tools. The wisdom ring, there's no ceiling. So when you step into the field of the wisdom, it will grow and expand with you. It will always stay just a little bit ahead, pulling you and expanding you. Um, and so if you're in different spaces and places, um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be. So, yeah, if you go to a different space or a place, you know, whether, you know, whether you're wearing a wisdom ring or not, the energetics of that space can affect you. You know, you go to a sacred site, you know, and you feel those energetics and they, it's like they permanently affect you. Um, you know, they affect your consciousness, your awareness, everything. And so when you're wearing that wisdom, yeah, it can just expand that effect that those sacred sites or whatever in your environment, it can expand that on how that does affect you, is, is how I'm seeing that, Samson. Um, Brenda, I have an Architron pendant from Nick Edwards. Would the wisdom ring have an effect on it? Y yes. Um, so that's what we're seeing too, is that, you know, other people's tools, especially people who are making tools that have a connection with consciousness, they are, you know, whether they're a third templates, um, things like that. So basically it is, again, kind of like with the Slim Sperling ring and the wisdom ring is that the wisdom ring didn't come in and force its energetics or anything onto that ring to change the energetics of it. It's simply connected to it and allowed it to connect to its higher consciousness, allowed it to expand. And so when you use that wisdom ring with somebody else's pendant, it just allows it to expand. And it's the same with a crystal. If you have a crystal, your favorite crystal that you wear, and you work with that wisdom ring with it, it allows that crystal to expand, to bring in its higher consciousness, just like it does with water, plants, people. Um, it just brings in higher potentials and possibilities. Uh, here not. FYI, I can't get the older light wand to hold the energetics. I set the older light wand on the original wings to talk unintentionally, and wow, that energy sure is interesting. Okay, yeah, and and I'm not sure, Marina, how how that's going to work with trying to um, get that older light wand to hold the energetics of the wisdom wand. Um, we'll still have to play with that one and, and see what it is that we can do. Uh, let's see. Can the wisdom ring do the same as the wisdom wand? Hmm. Yes and no. Um, they both contain that field of the wisdom, that wisdom energetics. 
So you can use that wisdom ring, um, you know, in that field. The wisdom wand is, to me, there's something different with the wisdom wand than the wisdom ring. Um, there's something different here with this. And I don't know what that difference is. But I do know, I mean, like as in your actual using, using, I mean, you can use this to run energy and it does phenomenal things. Um, the energy field is the same, but I'm not sure what the difference is there's something different with the wand than just the rings. So I'm sorry I cannot answer that question. I have the smallest wisdom ring, just placing it under my plate before eating changes my food. Question mark. Yes. Um, yes. So the wisdom rings, um, if you just, so if you have, um, small wisdom ring and you just place it on the plate it will change the food so basically when you place the ring there you have an intention already because you're placing the ring under your plate of food and so your intention is already there to change the energetics and then this is holding the space and it'll change the energetics of the food um, and of course even though this is simply an intention, if you can take another extra moment to, I guess, witness this field, it's kind of like your divine awareness, your awareness coming and seeing, witnessing, imagining that, there you go, witness and imagine then this ring expanding, going through the food and shifting your food. You don't have to know that this goes all the way back to its origins. Um, every molecule that came out of the ground to grow the corn, every little bit of the grass that fed the cow, whatever it is, you don't have to imagine that, but you just witness and imagine and hold your divine awareness and attention to this ring going through all of the food and encompassing it. And then the consciousness of the food does the work. <sighs> that feels really powerful. Thank you. I need to start consciously doing that with my food more. I used to have that set into my field, into my toroidal field that I would, you know, bless the food, go back and give thanks to it all the way from its source. But I'm going to start wanting my food because I feel like it's different. It's different. It's not just giving gratitude to the food. It is bringing in higher consciousness to it. Um, would a wisdom ring be a good gift for someone experiencing challenges from genetic alteration, EMF support? What? To, for plant seeds similar to the human. Um, sorry, JP, I was having a hard time um, reading there, but let, let me take this in a couple parts here. Would the wisdom ring be a good gift for someone experiencing challenges from genetic alteration? Most definitely. Um, you know, we're able to change our DNA through consciousness. We can, it's just happening. It's just happening that our DNA is shifting and changing, coming online, activating all the good stuff. That's just what is happening. And we can't really stop that um, because that's just a part of where we're at and what we're doing um, as human species on this planet. But yes, the wisdom fields are going to help shift and change things faster and with a lot more grace and ease and quickness. Um, so EMF support and more. Yes, the wisdom mm -hmm. the wisdom rings will um, hold space. What will do the restructuring of electromagnetic fields as well. Um, and then for and then I'm sorry I don't quite understand the other part of the question about planting seeds similar for the human. Um, what do they do for plant seeds? Oh, thank you, JB. Um, what they do for plant seeds is 
Whew, wow. Okay. So what the wisdom rings are doing for like the plant seeds, we've seen that, you know, it was put into the energetics of our tools years ago when Slim Sperling brought us this, um, the three rings with, with four coils on it and a sphere in the center. And that was way back when the, the first rings were created, you know, the 144, 177, 188 megahertz rings. And we were seeing at that time that that particular field of energy was allowing a plant seed that was GMO, genetically modified, to change its DNA so that when that seed became a plant, it was bringing through the highest potentials and possibilities for its DNA. But the wisdom rings, holy smokes, it's not just bringing through the highest potential possibilities for the DNA that exists in this third density plane, it is working with the consciousness to restructure, repattern energy. Um, so it is doing something quite different. It would be interesting in the next few years to see what new comes into this world. You know, it used to be that, you know, Atlantean times and the gardens that we grew and the plants and the nutrition and the everything that we had at one time has all been, you know, bred out. You know, even an apple you get anymore isn't really an apple. Um, there's some heirloom stuff out there. That's why heirloom seeds are phenomenal, but even those um, aren't quite the same. So it'd be interesting to see with these wisdom fields on what will develop with our plants because, you know, as we shift and change in frequency and vibration on this planet and in consciousness, that also reflects into the plant kingdom. And um, I have a feeling that it's going to really be beautiful here in a few years in the plant kingdom realm. Uh, does the wisdom, wisdom wand work passively on a person? Yes, you can totally just keep the wisdom wand in your field and it's going to do great work. Um, gosh, you guys, sorry, it's, we're, we're kind of way over our time here. Thank you all for still being here. Um, the wisdom wand will work passively. So, and, and this will probably be the last question we'll do. I see it's the last question we have right now, unless it pertains to the wisdom wand as we talk about the wisdom wand a little bit. So the wisdom wand does work passively in the field. Um, you just carry it in your pocket, sleep with it under your pillow. Most of us still sleep. Most of us are sleeping with our wisdom wands. Um, Mary, who works at the studio, she noted that there was um, somebody that she knew that was always seeking assistance. And, you know, and Mary, she's, she's a shaman. She, um, she had a dream the other night, a very vivid dream, where she was just simply holding space for this gentleman mm -hmm. and for all these things to take place. Um, and it was because the wisdom one that she was sleeping with that she felt that it held that space and that field for her doing that work while she was in dream time. Um, anyway just passively being in the field i guess is my point with that is that it is affecting us now the wisdom wand it is one that when you work with this um and, and you can check out the website there is a little bit of information on the wisdom wand and you know on there but there's going to be a lot more to it and i cannot wait to get people's testimonials on there to talk a little bit more about how they've used it and what they've done with the wisdom wand but for me, using the wisdom wand, it's kind of like using the using it in the passive sense. In the way that we use, um, like the the rings last week, um, the wisdom water rings, how we did the meditation last week, um, and then it's also how we're using that wisdom field. I think we spoke about the wisdom field or did some kind of a meditation on one of the fifty questions Fridays. You can go back just a you know two or three weeks and and again you'll be able to see the timestamp towards the end of those videos as you find them on youtube um is where the timestamps are twisted sage youtube channel and we did a little bit on the wisdom field there where we basically were attuned to it and then we put our attention on something 
our divine awareness and it would shift so with the wisdom wand it is so much more potent and powerful on and easy to shift those fields with your attention so since they've had the wisdom wand and as i even stay on the, that web page there there is not a thing that i have not felt a shift with of something that comes into my awareness um whether it is an emotional reaction to something you're like oh crap i thought i did all the work and got that gone or you know and released all that and, and whatever um so you step back in you're holding the wand you just put your attention and to me i can just see this field around me and then as this field is around me and my attention goes to this emotional reaction or the situation because it's all together you know you just put your attention there and i can feel the shift and um pains you know like with the wisdom ring you know i talked about on one of the 50 questions fridays how i had a toothache and simply how i used it was to put my attention onto the ring that wisdom field and onto the toothache at the same time while being in the heart space and just allowing the feeling of it the recognition of it and then letting it go so the wisdom wand is it, it's another step above that space of using the wisdom rings in that um, because in order to do this style of work, you have to come to the zero point, to that space within you. That is where we did the thing on December 3rd. That is, I feel, a necessity. And that is what the Wisdom Wand is helping to facilitate, is to bring everything back into center back to the zero point because then we become more of who we are we're not that experience that lifetime that trauma that belief that hurt and trauma and belief structure around that and everything else we become more who we are into that zero point space of the soul in the sacred space of the heart and so I feel that the wisdom wand helps to get us more into that zero point space. Then when we are in that zero point space and when we're in the heart space, taking those three breaths going into the heart, the zero point space, you are aligned with all that you are. You have your attention, you're holding the wand, you have your attention on something and it changes, it shifts. Whether it is shifting that entire creation or whether it is shifting because everything is energy and all energy is yours and all energy is here to serve you there's still shitty things happening in your world it is still there serving you somehow find what it is why that's still serving you and release it use the wisdom wand so yeah um so whether the whether my attention onto what that was is changing that creation or if that is changing my reaction perception involvement in that creation that caused that reaction in the first place um whatever it is it brought me more peace it allowed that to no longer be a part of my reality um there's huge things happening in, right now in this world and um you know we're, we're right here on this leading edge and so all of you that are here thank you very much for being here because we are out on that leading edge of the expansion of consciousness and what it is that we can do um through being in the heart space through consciousness um anyway sorry my soapbox again uh going back to what it is with the wisdom wand um you know and again on the website so that was kind of that that passive sense that that sense of 
be in the zero point space and using the wand to do that work. Okay, so now then we're going to move on to some of the active ways to use in the wand. Um, water, again, if you don't need the water wisdom rings, you can use the wisdom wand um, instead of the water wisdom rings. Basically, what we do, we, we, and as we say on the product page, is wanding. Wanding is an action. It is a moving of the tip of the wand in a circle. I like to do clockwise, small, fast circles like this. You can do figure eights. You can do counterclockwise, whatever it is that feels right to you. You can use your left hand, right hand, big toe, whatever. doesn't matter. To me, it's just making a movement with the wand. Because when I point the wand at my palm, I can kind of feel it. Whew, holy smokes. As soon as I start making the movements, that's when I can feel it. That might be my own belief system and my own intention. I don't know. You play with it and you do it the way that you feel guided to. Because you can never do anything wrong with these. But for me, it's wanding wand my water and I can see it and feel it change instantly. So it is doing that work of, because that's my intention, my soft intention when I'm wanding the water anyway, is to doing the same work that the water wisdom rings do. So now then, somebody had given me the idea about the food. Totally going to start wanding my food. Um, I wand everything, whether it is uh, I can hear, you know, like my daughter having a bad dream in the middle of the night. On her, help her, uh, help her do the clearing. Um, let's see. Somebody was mentioning about the um, code here. Oh, hey, sorry, you guys. The wisdom wand code for those of you who are here live. The wisdom, the wisdom code is working now. So. You can now use the code that I gave you here in the beginning for those who are live, and you can receive that discount on the wisdom wand. Um, okay, so I'm just perusing through here on the chat side. Again, sorry if you do have questions, be sure you get them over onto the questions tab. Um, And I'm just reading some of the comments. Some of the comments here are pretty cool um, about people that are using the, the tools in their experiences. And again, uh, any of you guys that are sharing experiences here, we'd love for you to drop those experiences into the um, testimonials page. Because, uh, you know, again, it's, it's phenomenal when other people can hear the experiences that you're having with the tools. Um, so let's see. But yeah, as far as uh, some of the other questions here, we're just going to cover a few, any questions on the wisdom wand. And otherwise, um, we will be complete today. Um, oh, let's see. Somebody did ask, though, I'd like to use the tools on my horses to calm, heal, and connect. Any suggestions? Yes, the horse harmonizer. We actually have a ring for that. Um, the horse harmonizer ring is a phenomenal one. And, of course, you can use the wand, too. Um, so let's see. Anything else about the wand that I need to share since that's what we're talking about right now? Um, man, I don't think so. Um, the wand we didn't put, in, it doesn't need an infinity because it connects into, you know, all that you are, your entire being, so we don't need to have the infinity to connect us. Um, didn't put a clasp on it, we just didn't feel to put a clasp on it this time. There are a lot of things that you can do, though, for your own fasteners. I got this thing here at Hobby Lobby. It's something that you can actually turn into a bracelet, so you could wear it as a bracelet. Um, you know, to keep your tool with you. This is one that I actually just carry in my pocket on this little lanyard. So, you know, you can add whatever you want 
to fasten this tool um you know just go to hobby lobby they even have these little little pieces here that'll have a snap on them or to any of your hobby stores if you want to add something for a clip onto this i even noticed that mary has a big beaded necklace mary at this at the shop and she was wearing her wisdom wand on a great big beaded necklace and you have to have something kind of thick and comfortable because this is quite a heavy little tool these things have some heft to them um flipping amazing um don't know what else to say about it but um yeah when you're running energy you can just imagine that field being around somebody or something and um i'm gonna start doing sessions distant sessions again and for some of the people who i've been working with that's basically all I'm doing is holding a space for them and watching and seeing what it is that's going on. And I'm basically just a witness. So as, as I'm holding them in this space, I'm simply a witness for them to see what it is, whether it's an energetic cord to something here that needs cleared or whether it's a blockage here or whatever it is, I am simply just a witness as I'm holding space. Well, that's all the energy work is that we do anyway by distance. We're a witness. We hold a space, hold a field, and it clears. But with the wisdom field, holy smokes, do things clear. And so that's really how, how I've been doing my work is by holding space, using the wisdom wand to hold that space. And then I just put my, I just look and see and be the witness for whatever it is that comes up to be cleared. So, um, let's see. How will the binary infusion pendant change if I add a wisdom ring to it? Boy, um, I can't even see right now to tell you the truth, uh, Jennifer. So the binary infusion pendant is the, the harmonizer in the chalice ring. And if you add the wisdom ring to it, so the, the wisdom ring pendant is pretty fantastic on its own because it's holding that, that field, field of the wisdom energetics. But when you add any other energetics to it, it changes quite a bit. So for instance here, um, with, with the wisdom ring, the harmonizer in that binary infusion is powerful. So actually if you have that binary infusion pendant and you just got this small wisdom ring and this is the same size as the chalice ring is so with your binary infusion pendant you would have a a medium uh, the harmonizer ring and then this one would fit right inside of there this is a powerful combination the wisdom ring and the harmonizer ring um so that's why i've wore it here is i have the divine i am the harmonizer ring and then the center ring on the wings of talk is the um is the wisdom ring so it's a great combination when you add this wisdom ring pendant to any of the other tools it's 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 a pretty fantastic combination all right you guys we went an hour and 40 minutes today Yay, I think that's our new record. Well, thank you all for being here. Um, yeah, everybody take care. And, well, take care is not the right word. Oh, my goodness. Wishing everybody abundance and health and higher perceptions. All right. We'll see you next time.